Hello, welcome back to the channel. So this is a video called Wargame and a Questioner Scale. It's primarily aimed at beginners to help you understand and have a think about some of the things to consider when selecting the scale that you want to start building your armies in. So there's a few things to consider. I'm going to go through each one. And what I have in front of us as an example is three of my projects. Certainly when it comes to wargaming, I have a series of models and loads of different scales. So as an example, you may have seen some of my videos. At the moment, I've got 28 millimeter ancients. I've got six millimeter ancients. When it comes to Napoleonics, as you can see, I'm going to be doing some epic battles. I've got some six mil Napoleonics and I have some 28 mil a meter Napoleonics. Uh, Vietnam, for example, I've got 15 millimeter Vietnam. World War One, 15 millimeter. World War Two, I've got 28 millimeter and 15 millimeter World War Two. Mech War of Independence, I've got 10 millimeter. And obviously, yeah, epic battles, Mechs of War, and loads of other stuff I haven't mentioned. So, what are we thinking about when it comes to to scale and size. First up, let's talk about the difference between scale and size. Size is physically how tall it is. So it's six millimeters, 13.5 millimeters, and 28 millimeters. So kind of height of the individual figures. But actually, in terms of scale, what we have is these guys be one three hundredth scale. These would be about one one hundredth scale, something around that, and these would be one fifty second. And that represents a ratio of how big this model. So this would need to be increased 300 times to be the size of our regular guy on a horse. So what do we need to consider? First off is cost. The smaller the model, generally the cheaper it is. Dead simple. There is a, another thing to throw into the mix there is the materials as well. So metal tends to be more expensive than plastic. And smaller scale stuff tends to be mainly in metal, whereas the larger scale stuff, certainly the more popular ranges or more popular units within ranges, tend to be plastic. Which is why the Warlord game stuff has been quite revolutionary to the market. We've had plastic uh, sort of World War II stuff before, primarily for tanks, is dry for that, but this is the first time I think we've really done plastic wargaming figures that wasn't sort of World War II-ish. Now, cost and value, etc., is all subjective to the person. So I don't tend to look at cost or value too much in my videos, and I'll let the individuals make up their minds about that. Next up, what we need to do is think about what you want to represent. So with this, the way I think about my miniatures is 28 millimeter generally is for tactical warfare. Smaller scale conundrum. So my black powder battles, I'm not trying to recreate the Battle of Talavera. What I am doing is looking at what maybe a couple of French brigades in column does and how can they overwhelm a couple of British brigades in line and looking at that in detail. Certainly if you think about bolt action, for example, what you have there is a platoon or reinforced platoon against an enemy of similar sort of numbers. That's a completely different battle than if you were trying to recreate, let's say, the Omaha Beach Landings, where you would want multiple battalions represented and, and multiple defenders. And I think that's more what the smaller scale stuff is able to, to recreate. This is what I'd call a sort of a mass battle. You're going to get more units, you're going to get more figures on the table. Those figures are going to be able to represent more different units. So tactical units are important. Certainly my 28mm games on a 6x4 table, once we get up past 10, 12 units, that table starts to get a bit crowded. Whereas obviously with the smaller scale models, although frontage is often similar, it doesn't feel as cramped and we can get more on the tabletop and certainly... If that was true of 10 mil, 13.5 uh, mil, this epic battles, um, epic uh, 6 mil allows you to really get stuck in and start to recreate those battles. So the other thing that 6 mil represents really well is more operational warfare. 
And what you'll find with rule sets as well, rule sets will be generally written so a 28 millimeter rule set might be one man fires a rifle i get one dice dice roll to hit dice roll to cause a casualty and a figure is taken off the tabletop whereas the smaller scale stuff starts to become a bit more abstract like black powder is abstract for example whereas we're not going to take off individual figures or individual stands what we are going to do is record some sort of stand loss principles of war use that as well or you might build up a load of hits on a base and then a base is taken off so you'll start to see things become more abstracted as opposed to a simple one man rolls a dice which rolls a casualty which takes a figure off so you have to start to think about what do you want to represent then you've got to think about your preferences. I, I firmly believe that everybody's a hobby pie chart. And on that hobby pie chart, you will have preferences for painting, gaming, socialising, accumulating, immersing yourself into the history of it. And, and there'll be other bits in there. So even the most ardent gamer, person who likes to, to play games, will have still have an element where they engage with painting or engage with socialising, engage with history. So thinking about that allows you to th think about do I want a project for painting, in which case I might want to go for larger models. Is it Do I want to collect specific army groups, in which case I might want to go to smaller models so I can collect all those. Imagine if you're a World War II gamer and you wanted to represent the Irish Guards, for example, of going up uh, Hell's Highway at Arnhem. Well, at 6 mil, you'd be able to rep represent every tank, every armoured vehicle in that formation where and display it quite nicely on the tabletop and maybe even use some games with all of it. Whereas if you were going up the scales, you would naturally collect less and less of it a there's a as a cost and space element of it and b it'd be very rare for if you collected all those tanks and units in 28 mil it'd be very rare for you to be able to have a game size big enough to use it all so yeah so think about your personal preference what do you want to do what do you like doing and that's not to say there isn't joy in painting the smaller scale stuff certainly I started off my Waterloo in 6mm was a project and during the Waterloo in 6mm I was enjoying it but I wanted to do a bit more work with the uniforms. So that is what inspired me to start 28mm. I now have a good division of sides plus support for both sides in 28mm and every brigade represented at Waterloo in 6mm. What it means for this is obviously when when for me when epic battles when I've got a decent amount of this based up well these at the moment will be the epic battles models will be doing exactly what the my six mil stuff will be able to do so I'm going to look at what I want to do in my six mil and maybe rebase it so that each base is representing a brigade and I might have two or three battalions represented on that base and then use a more abstracted rule set. But go look at that and exactly what I want to do with it once we get there. Which takes us on to the models and, and the details themselves. I mean, straight away you can see a lot more detail. And that doesn't mean I've painted all the details. Uh, but you can see a lot more detail in the bigger models than you can with the smaller models. And you can explore and push and develop your painting. And, and painting these fellas is a different methodology to painting these fellas to painting those fellas actually one of the things I've, i mentioned in my videos before when i did my six mil i always did my uh sort of reins and stuff for horses and white so they stood out and i carried that over to my 28 actually one of the things i'm doing with the epic battles going back and doing it black which is where it should be but actually that's really quick as well painting for uh, just putting black temple on it the other thing that you might want to consider when you are 
selecting what size of models you want to use is a local community is who you're going to play, play against who you're going to play with if there's a strong preference either way there that's generally going to dominate and dictate what scale you're going to do especially if you're wanting to do it primarily for gaming and socializing and they're your preferences so for example a local war game club to me does a load of stuff in 15 millimeter a 15 millimeter for some stuff is isn't a scale I, I generally would play with I, I i like my 10 millimeters when we're getting smaller stuff <clears throat> but certainly if i was wanting to engage with that club i'd probably have to do 15 millimeter i have another group of players and we do Napoleon X in 28 so, and every so often we get together and we have a big game so obviously if they were my primary war game and outlet I'd probably be doing 28 millimeters and, and in fact there's only one other one of those guys that's going to be doing epic battles with me but luckily I mean I do live quite isolated I do solo gaming as you play so for me I generally would collect a force and do both sides anyway so scale I'm able to pick the scale that's right for me And the other thing, I suppose, one thing I don't need to consider, I could put some infantry out just to show you some differences. Um, one thing I don't need to consider is I'm in Britain, so generally I've got access to the best markets for historical gaming. However, I understand in different parts of the world you may be severely limited about what ranges you're able to get a hold of. So some of these decisions may already be made for you. Interesting, one of the things I've seen growing in popularity of late is 2mm wargaming. Uh, I both like it and I don't like it. I often think, would I be, not be better off playing with counters at that scale? But that is, again, a personal preference coming in. Um, I said I do Vietnam in 15mm, that's why I can play company games with multiple platoons and, and bringing in different support elements. If I wanted a real gritty squad on squad Vietnam game, I'd probably look at the 28mm models, for example, the Rubicon stuff, which is coming out. So there you go. So this is, uh, give you a few difference between the French infantry with black powder, 28mm based up. And I've used these for black powder. I've used these for war master as well. Uh, use these for principles of warmer six mil. Uh, we'll apologise. The flags I've taken off, and the basin isn't done because I've rebased all these models. Originally, they were on forty-five mil bases. I've reduced them all down to forty mil because, like I'm saying, with that play group I was gaming with, we we're using forty mil bases. It just makes it a bit more tighter. So with these guys, I can six mil. A cuffed flown column. If I'm doing an attack column, that's what my attack columns look like. Line, obviously dead easy. And if we need to form square, it's not a hollow square, it's a square like that. So there you go. There's my thoughts on some of the things you need you should consider when you're picking what scale works for you. And ultimately, you know what? The best piece of advice I can give you is follow your hobby muse. Whatever you want to do in wargaming with the hobby, follow your muse. Because you're going to be the person spending the time researching, looking at buying, painting, playing with, living with these models. One of the joys is these, these, these models will be around and they're your models. So... It's a hobby you should be enjoying, so yeah, don't don't let it become a chore. Enjoy it. Pick the stuff that works for you, um, and don't be afraid to negotiate with you. If, if you're in a player group and everybody's wanting to do, or some people want to do a scale or something, don't don't be afraid to put your thoughts and views out there and, and, and chat to people. You know what? People might be picking a certain scale just because it's what they've always done, and sometimes a bit of change is good. But anyway... That's enough of me talking now. I hope you're having a great time war gaming at the moment. I know I am. And I look forward to chatting to you later. If you've got any questions or thoughts or things you'd like to add, 
chuck them in the comment sections. I always love having chats about wargaming. But anyway, that's goodbye from me, and I look forward to seeing you again at another video. Bye-bye.